Hi guys, this is my Android control car. The mobile is connected to the Wi-Fi network and the Raspberry Pi is also connected to the Wi-Fi network. So, and the accelerometer in the mobile is controlling the Android car. So when I tilt it to the left, you can see it left, right, and the forward, and the backward motion. I have a scroll bar which controls the speed. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let me explain to you how it works. Before that, uh, there are a lot of applications for this. Uh, I have a Raspberry Pi which uh, controls the motors. Instead of the motors, you can plug in uh, any power supply, like example, a fan or a tube light or any bulb, a geyser. So you can do a home automation in this. This is a, a Linux computer. So you have an option to plug in uh, any USB. Suppose if you plug in a camera, USB camera, you can, you can get the live video feed. So you can use it for uh, military purpose. Uh, surveillance cameras in your home home automation purpose and then uh, you can fix the Raspberry Pi to any air drone and if there is any floods or any fires you can use that to, for surveillance so this is a very low cost comp Linux system it costs around $40 um, and the entire setup took me around $50 so which is very cheap for a uh, home automation or a uh, uh, any kind of uh, surveillance robot so I'll show you a demo I tilt it to the front, it's goes front backward, it's backward and then if it won't go tilt right it's right or everything happens with the tilt Okay, now let me show you how we, how it works. As you all know, this is a Raspberry Pi, which is a Linux system. This Raspberry Pi is powered uh, via my uh, mobile bank, and the motors, front and the back motors, are both powered by a battery, which is there in the car. So, how I have done it is, as you all know, Raspberry Pi is a Linux computer. So this has a node.js running in the port 1337. So this Raspberry Pi is connected to the Wi-Fi network with an IP, which I know. And there is a mobile device. This mobile device is connected to the Wi-Fi. And uh, the user uh, inputs like forward, backward, left, right, and the speed are taken from the mobile and passed to the Raspberry Pi. This communication happens through the Wi-Fi because the mobile knows the IP address of the Wi-Fi. So this Pi has to read whatever the input is coming from the mobile and control by motor. So how the motor is being controlled? There is a car. The car has two motors, M1 and M2. This motor controls the direction left and right and this motor controls the motion forward, backward and the speed. So uh, Raspberry Pi has uh, something called general purpose input output pins. As you see here, there are pins. So I have taken four pins for my demo. So this pins have given output of 3.3 volts on the maximum of 16 milliamps which is not enough to power the motor. So I take the power to power the motor from a battery source, a battery which is 9 volts 
and uh, to power the motor so how it happens is i use a npn transistor an npn transistor is an amplifier so it works this way so i give a 5 volt and uh, if i give a positive digital output over one over here then this the circuit is complete so what i do is the raspberry pi i connect it to the 1 kilo ohm resistor because uh, i have a 3.3 volt which uh, which is not need so much is not needed to power an npn transistor so so this is an npn transistor base Raspberry Pi has a 5 volt output underground. So here I have a relay. Relay 1. So this relay is switched on using my NPN transistor and the GPIO pin. This is the pin 1 numbering. So what happens, I connect the batteries positive, the batteries negative and now I connect this to the motor. So I have avoided taking power this direct 5 volt to the motor uh, or uh, using this direct 9 volt in my NPN transistor because I didn't want to burn my Raspberry Pi. So I use the relay and an NPN transistor in my circuit. So what happens now is when I give a digital input of 1 over here in this GPIO pin, this NPN transistor is powered on. This circuit becomes complete. So this relay switches on and the battery is positive negative is transferred over here and I get the positive and negative over here. This makes the motor run in clockwise direction so now we have a problem how to run the motor in anti-clockwise direction so the same setup I do I take one more transistor I give it to a relay the battery is positive battery negative they give it to the plus 5 volt of the raspberry pi this is counted now i get a positive and a negative over here i give it in the reverse direction So what happens is, when the relay 1, the relay 1 is 1 and the relay 2 is 0, I get a clockwise direction. When the relay 1 is 0 and the relay 2 is 1, I get an anti-clockwise, this, this way. When both are 0, the motor doesn't run it's in stop state and both are one it's a forbidden state which we should not do which will burn so now uh, let's how to connect the motor to this is the same logic i used in motor 2 i used one more an npn transistor and uh, two more npn transistor and two more relays to control the forward and the backward motion so now relay 3 1 and a 0 will be forward 0 and 1 will be backward 0 0 will be stop and the 1 1 this should not do so the next problem how do I now control the speed of this motor? So for this concept I use uh, something called pulse width modulation. So 
so you have time frames this is one second 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 third second fourth second suppose if i want 100% output from the 9 volt battery to the motor i just give 9 volts always for the 4 seconds i get 100% for the next scenario i give 100% for 500 milliseconds and then 0 for the next 500 milliseconds again i give 100 and 0 Again, I give 100 and 0, 100 and 0. So 50% of the time, the motor is switched on. So I get 50% uh, speed. Suppose if I want 75% uh, of speed. So I keep it on for uh, 750 milliseconds, which is 3 fourths. So I get 75% of output. So uh, here, uh, that's it. Uh, I think I've explained all the concept. I have used a relay and an NPN transistor because um, I can use a 9 volt or a 20 volt or anything of sort for my battery. Instead of using a motor over here, I can also use a, a fan, a tube light, or a fan, any bulb, any geyser. So this relay can uh, support a capacity of uh, up to 230 volt. So nowhere this 230 volt is being played in my Raspberry Pi or uh, any transistor. So the beauty of the circuit is you can control any home automation or anything. So that is one advantage of this uh, circuit diagram. And then uh, this application of this car is uh, many things. This can be this car can be controlled from anywhere, any place because this is everything is in Wi-Fi network. Uh, so this can once you know the uh, Raspberry Pi's IP, you can connect the car from anywhere. So that is a application you can use it in military purpose. You can use it in your home. You can use it as a surveillance car. So and then. Uh, if not cars, this can be used for home automation purpose. So this is a basic diagram. I hope you guys understood it. And thank you for listening.